Hello YouTube. How are you? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. But um it's been a while since I made a video. Mainly because nothing major major has happened. So it might be on the brink of major major happening. Whether in my mind or in the world. But um what prompted me to make one now is um, just turned on the radio just to see what the time was that's all I usually use it for these days and uh, noticed it was one minute past midnight so I thought oh okay might as well just hear a bit of midnight news and um, and it was a person speaking in parliament Lo and behold, what is this MP voicing his concern about his, perhaps his famous moment when he gets to talk, the time when he can change the world and make it a better place, that's why he became an MP. And he's talking about the availability of tickets or sporting venues <laughs> and you know moaning about when I check if the tickets are all sold out and then the the only place I can go is the open market <laughs> you know and it's just do you know what I mean I'm sure it's a good point and everything and if you think about the economies of all you know it's it's something to raise, but with all that is going on, the awakening, the changes, and this is what they do in the Houses of Parliament. Yeah, it's just pretty shit, really. But I am. I'm just going to keep this on for a moment because I know there's some things I want to talk about um, yeah I've been um, doing my website healself.co.uk I've been working on that and um, really you know I think you know I've done quite a lot of research I'm really passionate about this subject I think it's fascinating um, I've been reading I've been trying I've been buying loads of herbs you know for a good well, I don't know a year and a half maybe it's even less than that but it's been full on into it so yeah God, cool, maybe it's in, maybe it's a bit longer I can't remember now anyway so this website I think is actually going to be quite good you know it's mostly it's not mostly done it's about half done with all the content I'm going to put on there but basically it's going to be quite easy to read frank so you can get through the points quickly because there's just so so many you know it gets so confusing but it can be simplified and that's what my aim is on that website so recommend have a look at it you know if you're if you're in people don't often want to think about health until they've got some catastrophic uh, illness and they have to deal with it um, that's mainly because you know doctors tend to like to scare people and all I will say is you know heal self there it is in one word you know the body does heal itself so it's no biggie it's very simple um, you know some of you will be satisfied with just reading the couple of paragraphs on the front page others of you might want to delve deeper I you know, recommend you do because I'm trying to cover all the angles anyway enough about that um, although I will talk about you know my own steps of improving my health over the last 
say I've been yeah practicing on myself probably for nearly a year um, yeah it was yeah it was about a year ago now that I was buying herbs and stuff from overseas and get seeing what I can get hold of because some like one this poor Diarco which is from South America a really good antioxidant anti-cancer um, that um, that they wouldn't allow that it, the sale went through and then it got cancelled because of importation issues uh, they do like to ban all the um, very good herbs uh, so we know they're assholes don't we we know they're trying to kill us but anyway and there was this one I had to get um, only sort of available for your pets you can I could only buy it for pet use but it's saying there put it into your dogs or cats food and detoxifies its minerals it's red desert clay so sometimes I put it into a glass of water stir it around gulp it down find no ill effects from that um, and uh, you can tell I'm stoned. <laughs> Sorry, but my eyes look pretty bad. I tell you, I don't smoke much weed anymore. It's mainly just oh shit, just incriminating myself. It's mainly just um, solids. And um, but yeah, a lot of the weed these days making my eyes red. Don't like it. So I don't think it's proper cannabis. But anyway. What was I talking about? <laughs> Just lost to five views. Right. Um, oh yeah, the red desert clay, yeah. It's good stuff. But they're banning it. So there we go, you know, there's another thing they banned a long time ago was cannabis. So anyway, about a year ago I got these herbs and started trying them out you know I'm I'm a small person well not that small I'm probably average height but you know I'm quite slender toned <laughs> and, um, so I I'm, I've always been a lightweight with things as well so I would just try a little bit you know and see what effect it has and you know I've been trying a lot of stuff and I've been improving my health I've been improving my diet I'm trying to improve the um, acidity or if you like alkalinity of my my saliva because um, the blood has to be maintained at a specific pH otherwise you'll die. It has to be like 7.45 you know or else. So the body will just take it from wherever and it from one of the first places it takes it is from the saliva. Um, so you can spit on one litmus paper. You're supposed to do it in the morning before you eat anything and I've noticed even if I just swill some water around it comes out um, like seven or eight pH, but when I when I do it properly, it's pretty pretty poor. It's about <laughs> between five and six, which isn't good, because the cancer cancer loves acidic. And I've never been diagnosed with cancer, but I think it's a fair possibility that I've got some sort of cancer tumor somewhere and um, I two reasons why I won't go and have an MRI scan to find out one I believe my chances of healing myself are much much better um, especially with everybody around me telling me otherwise the opposite 
because they've got ailments, but they don't go the alternative healing way, like my dad, my mum, and other people anyway. So I've got to be quite strong on myself, and I know that if I did go and have an MRI scan, the doctors were like, right, you're, um, you know, you've got cancer, you better get in chemotherapy. <laughs> You know, then I, then it would be much harder to turn them down and go. No, I'm going the alternative either way. And secondly, an MRI scan is radiation, so if I have got tumor or anything, it's only going to make it worse. So, th so no thanks on both those reasons. Right. So what what first happened with me? Uh, it's over two years ago now, but I was having wisdom teeth issues, I mean they were hurting, my face was aching and shit like that, and um, and then suddenly like this jaw here is all swelled up and I couldn't open my mouth and it was getting worse and worse and I couldn't, you know, imagine trying to eat and you can't open your mouth, it's really frustrating. And I think, you know, up to this point I just avoided health. I just didn't want to know. Like most people who don't have health problems, you know, you just don't want to think about it because you don't want it to happen to you or anything like that. When it happens, you know, you deal with it. Hang on. What can you see in the room? Uh, anyway, I'll show you that in a bit. Um, what was I saying? How about you all reminding me? Yeah, you bloody dickhead. Yeah, you are create scene, so I might cut this bit. Right, I was saying. Yeah, my mouth, and I couldn't eat, and I couldn't open my mouth, da 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 da. And, um, then after a few days it went away, and I could open my mouth again. So I assumed wisdom tooth got in the way a bit, it's okay now, I can open my mouth again. And, uh, so yeah, I was saying at this point in my life I'd never thought of having. So anyway, so I got this ailment, and because it, it comes back like a couple of months later, happens again, more sort of wisdom tooth pain and stuff comes back. So this time I'm forced to go to the doctor. I have some antibiotics, and um, after about uh, five days on the antibiotics, it starts to ease off again. So, whether it was just the same as last time, although I think I did bear with it quite a lot longer the second time, so I did bear with it. So it did definitely seem like the antibiotics did work, they, it went away. Then, about six months later in the summer, um, I'm on holiday. And I had started drinking rainwater and stopped using toothpaste and not brushing my teeth so often, not bathing so often. I was starting to see all this stuff about tap water, obviously. Chloride, chloride, fluoride. So I was beginning to sort of avoid it. Anyway, so we're on holiday in Norway, and I'm with my son, and we've been a week camping, and then we've made it to my parents' flat in Norway. And, um, and I'm brushing my teeth, 
and I go in to brush my teeth and I see my dad has some toothpaste that doesn't have fluoride but it has got a heck of a lot of other things in it. So I'm brushing my teeth and I'm going right back into that one and then suddenly I feel like a twinge mm -hmm. and it's like boom I know it's come back again. It was slow and I was still able to open my mouth this time but now it was a swelling it was like a lump got back off got back from Norway and it wasn't getting any better and you know it's affected my mood because <laughs> I thought it was gone but it's back and I go to this festival with my mate Adam and um, he's on YouTube as well Adam Potter no no Ad Potter That's it. Um, and we're at this festival, Bulldog, Bulldog Bash, and this thing's getting worse. And in the sun, it's fucking. Oh. It was killing me. So I, I kind of knew I had to sort of heal it from the sun. So I put a bandage. A bandage over my head like this. Look, look really stupid. And <laughs> people thought it was quite funny. And, um. But yeah, it's it's getting unbearable. And then, so I have this idea. It's, it's massive, it's swelling, it's, oh, it feels like it's blister, horrible. So I think, fuck it, I'm going to pop it. I keep a pin in my car, in my uh, wind thing, pin there. So I go to my car, light the pin, <laughs> jab it. I wasn't sure if I'd done it far enough, so I did it again. Yeah, and I was expecting it just to go, but hardly anything happened apart from the fact that it hurt like crap. It hurt like fuck. Um, it didn't last that long the pain, so. Oh, sod, it hasn't done anything. Covered it up again in my bandage and got and carried on. And then I just went and sat in the tent just to go sort of bear through the pain. Obviously fagging like a chimney smoker. Because, I mean, one, I think I could open my mouth. I couldn't open my mouth that wide. I think I could just about eat a hot dog. It's like, I had to like squash the hot dog. A bit, and I'd be able to force it because I was trying to think what would they do in nature if they had this? <laughs> They'd just fucking force it. <laughs> oh, jaw exercises, they're good to do for everyone. Anyway, so anyway, so yeah, I put this bandage back on and I sit in the tent and bearing through the pain and it gets to about say four hours have passed I think it's probably about 12 o'clock I suddenly start feeling a bit better and it's the last night of the festival so I walk back from the tent walking into the uh, to the festival and as I'm getting a bit closer I can smell like I reckon sort of sewage it's like I was thinking god you know they in anticipation of packing up tomorrow, they sort of packing up all the <laughs> pumping out all the sewage or something. That's what I thought. And anyway, so the dance tents are still open, so I go in and I'm sort of jigging about a bit and stuff. And my mate eventually see my mate Adam, and I was like, "God, doesn't it stink of shit around here?" And he's like. Well, I can't smell anything, but then he never can, usually, because his sinuses are usually always blocked, or they were then. So he can't, can't rely on him, but don't really want to ask anyone else. Anyway, so I keep, I keep smelling it, it's getting worse. Anyway, I carry on, go and get another drink, do a bit more dancing. And, and the smell of shit just becomes so strong that I just think, my God, I'm, I've just got to go. <laughs> how can I'm thinking how can anyone bear this and I 
when did it occur to me that it might be me? I guess it must have done. A, a small shade of thought just must have just that thought. It might be, well, leave anyway. Whichever way it is, I had to leave. Go back to the tent. So I go back to the tent, and sure enough, I can still sort of... And I think, you know, did someone... Did someone throw shit on me? <laughs> did, you know, did I... Did I put, I put my coat down earlier that day? That's what I was thinking. That's what I thought. I thought, oh, put my coat down earlier that day. Um, I must have put it on some shit and it's got on the... Is it in this, this same one? Because it was there. I was like, <laughs> my bandage. So I get back to the tent and, and I can still smell this smell. Checks out. Must have been a bit drunk as well. So I, I take all of these clothes off, and then I think, you know, it's, I can smell it on my sleeping bag. So I end up everything gets chucked out of the tent, and I fall asleep. I wake up in the morning, and I get up, and like the people we were tented with a few people around, and they're sort of up. And I sit up and I put my head out of the tent and they're like, Oh, your thing, your thing's gone. And like, because they'd seen the lump and everything, they'd given me painkillers and shit like that. And they're nice guys. And uh, I was like, Whoa. And then I I just saw a smell to it and I, I obviously realised it popped and there was a shitload of pus there. And it was all sort of in the. It was mainly sort of still in the bandage actually, but it was like lifting the bandage away and seeing, uh, realizing everything that had gone on. Anyway, so then I had a hole in my face for a while, um, but it healed up quite quick, and then it healed up. And then it came back. It healed up pretty good, and it came back. And but it been it must have been a few months or something. And now this was really distressing. Yeah, what? So you know anything I've been doing probably eating a little bit healthier eating a bit better trying to exercise a bit more I hadn't cut down fags so um, yeah and then that to that time when when I realized then I, you know I'm gonna pop it again because it was hurting so I'll pop it again No, because, sorry, in between that, so I, what I decided to do about it, what I convinced myself what it was, was in my mouth. I was convinced it was a problem in my mouth. So I went, you know, I went to the dentist finally when I could open my mouth. And they checked it, there was no infection. Nothing wrong inside my mouth at that point that they could see. But I had these metal fillings, and the one next to like the wisdom tooth had quite a big metal filling that went round the edge, and I was just convinced that that was the cause, because it was the alien thing. So I got them to um, drill that out and put white filling in. They charged me 180 quid for that well because they found another little hole in a tooth somewhere else and well white fill in that okay yeah even though it's bloody tiny it's still 90 quid anyway uh did that so so that was what was in between so then i was thinking right that's it that's going to be it now it's not going to come back so it came back again, really pissed off. Stabbed it with a needle. Um, nothing happened. 
Stabbed it. <laughs> Stabbed it. Shit load of times. I think that was my mistake. Because I forgot the moving around was important. When I did it before the pin and I didn't do anything. It was the moving around which got it going. And of course I know now that movement is what moves the lymph system. So by popping this I had, if you like, broken into the lymph system. I still don't quite know what was going there, but yes. I've had to sort of surmise that it's a cancer tumour. That probably the stress of what was going through had allowed, you know, well, cancer to get in there. And the reason I think it's that is because after that, I kept, it wouldn't heal up. And I was thinking, right, it won't heal up because the wisdom tooth hasn't moved into place yet. As soon as that moves into place, it'll be able to heal up. Which is still plausible even now. Um, because it has healed up. But I'll tell you something else. Um, so it would kept leaking and scab up. And then it would it would be okay for a few days and then it would leak again and scab up. It was it was constant but I kept kept cleaning it and made the best of a bad job but it, most people would noticed it noticed it and you can still you can see now scarring and and it and it was was looking more like my face was a little bit caved in but I think I could feel here like I had a sort of a difference that seems to be improving that seems to be building up but I'm not sure if it was because I wasn't using this side of my mouth for a long time that sort of weakened it in a sense as why well I was using this side of my mouth to compensate you know, fear of it sort of thing. So I'm trying to use both sides equally. Anyway, so, you know, and everyone was telling me, get to the doctor, get to the doctor, get to the doctor. But I refused. Because I was really into this alternative healing thing, and I kind of saw it as a, a good way to experiment, you know, see what affects it, and stuff like that. Um... So this went on for a while and then until I got to a point where I was going on to cub camp with my son. This is 2013 in like June or something. And and I thought, God, I've got to go on cub camp. You know, and this thing isn't clearing up. I tried everything. I tried putting slug juice on it. Desperate. <laughs> I thought I haven't tried giving up fags. So that was that. So we went to cub camp and give up fags. So I made it two and a half days. And one of the things I noticed on the day that I wasn't smoking, it's about a good halfway into the day, into the afternoon, my thing was really beginning to feel better like the moments when it would heal up it sort of seemed to do that sort of quite quickly and fast and um and over that time i mean going without fags was really good more sociable and stuff like that but anyway i couldn't last it more than two and a half days and i had what and I cut down the... So, so then, you know, I made sort of three days without it. So then I wanted to see if it definitely was. And I was smoking again. We were, I was going on a holiday with my son. I'm just staying in England. And I probably smoked quite a lot on that holiday. Or, and noticed it got worse again. So then I kind of knew it was... It just, definite correlation with the facts so 
for the first time in my life realised that yes they are telling the truth about this thing <laughs> it is an evil weed definitely is but I'm probably addicted I'll get off it one day anyway so that was a long story so what I decided to do not being able to give up fags I decided to make myself wait two hours between fags so that means I'm having about eight a day and sometimes I, well you know, often in the evening I make long ones but it's a heck of a lot better than what I was doing before and the other good thing it does and there was this is with this was the trap I was getting into before I would sit down you know depressed about something that wasn't going right have a fag and think that was nice or joint and I'd have another one straight away and that's just stupid so now I'll make myself wait two hours means I actually have to do something so that I don't think about it which is good because it means I'm getting things done I made a herb drying thing there, you see. I suppose this isn't good because I'm smoking near the herbs drying. <laughs> We're also going to see a shisha pipe that my stepson brought. But it's, it's cool, you just smoke like really wet strawberries and shit in there can be really wet but that's my herb drying thing I think it's pretty cool I weaved that out of St John's Waltz sticks they're really thin and quite strong so I did some weaving created something really useful it didn't cost me any money and if it broke I could repair it <laughs> spares so like yeah. I said with the healing you know I was pretty tame really about I was pretty tame with what um, with what herbs you know how much I took and everything I did a kind of a a slim detox we say I skimped through the detox I just wanted to test out the herbs I didn't necessarily want to use everything up because I wanted to sort of be able to let other people try it too which I'm doing now with my mate Adam and um, I'm getting all the herbs ready for a kidney and liver detox which I didn't do before and I'm seeing now you know, reading up on the kidneys the other night, you know, they are also quite, you know, a big thing to affect our well-being and how we feel. Um, but the liver, massive. And the liver detox is, is quite complicated. Um, again, this, you know, this is going to be all posted on the website, um, so people can do it themselves quite simply um, and it's you know it's all common sense and knowing the properties of the herbs that grow on this planet which are put here for us by the grand architect I think that's quite a good word and um, you know it's there and you know we'd even have enough with the herbs that just grow in our local area I sort of 
almost I like to believe there but it's good if we can get hold of the herbs from that grow in South America India you know because they are too have some pretty awesome properties and why not you can the good thing about herbs is you can you can pretty much use them all together you know not necessarily want to do that but what I'm saying is you don't have to worry about the side effects too much um, you know just do things in common sense as well use you know start off small and then take decent amount of doses and see see what the effect is um, yeah so um, this video wasn't supposed to all be about herbs and healing and stuff like that but there we go got that off my chest so like I say the website healself.co.uk go to it I don't get any money for it I do want to sort of become a practicing healer that is what I want to do and the reason I'm putting all the information out there on the web is because I think essentially it is pretty simple and basic and people are quite capable of doing it themselves but some people if they haven't got the time or inclination if they want to pay me to help them well then you know good that's a career I'd like to do and if they don't feel they've got the capacity to read it all up themselves then by all means I want to help them and yeah as long as I can put a roof over my head and buy my son a Christmas present go on holiday I'm happy and have a car and a motorbike <laughs> and a boat and a plane <laughs> all those things destroy the climate so what I really want is the world to become like hunter-gatherers again I think that would make it a more magical world again and you just love the people that you live with the ones around you the ones you've grown up with that's the only answer I can think of to it all I mean maybe you'd include internet in there it's good to be able to communicate with the world so if some little colony community thought of a brilliant idea and made something and it could spread but also we're going to become capable of telepathy so you know you don't need to know everyone in the world I don't know what am I talking about who knows what's going to happen I'm not a grand architect am I that's I think you know that's what I'm feeling now it is just you know watching this plan unfold who knows maybe it is the end of the universe maybe the universe is gonna is gonna that point where it's suddenly gonna collapse maybe this is the time there has to be that time maybe this is now or maybe it's just some catastrophe to our earth or maybe it's not even that well no, there's definitely there's definitely something because the climate is changing and we're seeing how it's affecting the bricks that hold the foundation of the society <laughs> which is which is what it says in the Bible isn't it the uh, the giant with the feet made of clay and the body of the pants of silver the body of gold and the or was it I, it, but it was the it was a hit into the heel and the clay the foundation of this society coastal homes coastal towns towns on rivers in the bricks it's hitting them in the bricks in the infrastructure it's the clay that's what I said 
and it's going to fall down because of that. You can't insure your home. Your home is nearly worthless. And that's happening all over. America too. I think it's starting in America actually. So anyway, yeah. It's um it's kind of happening it's happening gradually but it's kind of happening so so forcefully like a imagine a steamroller going through little crates. Like imagine like loads and loads of crates piled up to two on one on top of each other, so too high but just really long and the steam rollers come here's the first grate the steam roller doesn't even change speed it's just great 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 It's hit a couple of crates. It's, few, it's hit a few crates. It isn't going to stop. And then after the crate. <laughs> so yeah. The MP stands in the House of Commons. And he says. I can't get any tickets for the show. Why can't I get my tickets? This is stupid. I'm really pissed off. I want to get my tickets. He doesn't say it like this. Did he know the Lord Gentleman that if I order all those tickets are sold out, I have to go to open networks to achieve my ticket because that's the only way. <laughs> I guess it's what these people do for entertainment, isn't it? They buy tickets for stuff. <laughs> they like to watch Wimbledon. <sighs> I'm learning these days it is actually very important to be around people, but oh, maybe more so if it's in a positive way. I think it does stimulate a hormone. It's on the website. Sorry, it's all I ever think about these days. It's fascinating. Bodies are amazing. But all the stuff on the shelves is not good for us. I mean, I go to the supermarket. I, oh, shut up. What was I talking about? Yeah, the people who go to Wimbledon. Anyway, so I think that's a circle that's probably long enough, isn't it? Torture. Torture. So shall I do something funny at the end? <laughs> well, I noticed you couldn't see it because it was moving too fast. <laughs> okay. By the way, Lisa Tully, thanks for that message. Um, go to my last video and read a message from Lisa Tully. I'll talk about what she said in another, in another video. Anyway, thanks. Bye.